If a person performs a service for someone without communicating any expectation of being paid, can the person later demand payment? That was the million-dollar question in Bloomgarden v. Coyer. Henry Bloomgarden was the president of an urban and environmental consulting firm. One of the firm's shareholders was David Carley, who ran a company involved in urban redevelopment projects. Charles Coyer and William Guy were real estate developers in Washington, D.C. In 1969, Coyer told Bloomgarden about a plan to develop a business complex on the Georgetown waterfront. Coyer said that he and Guy didn't have enough money for the project, and Bloomgarden offered to introduce them to Carley. Bloomgarden arranged for Coyer and Guy to meet Carley in January of 1970. Bloomgarden then arranged for Coyer, Guy, and Carley to meet with Inland Steel Company to discuss the project. Bloomgarden never suggested to the group that he expected a finder's fee for bringing them together. Rather, when Guy asked Bloomgarden what he wanted out of the project, Bloomgarden said that he hoped his consulting firm could help implement the development plan. In late March of 1970, Bloomgarden suggested for the first time that his firm be paid a $1 million finder's fee. Bloomgarden subsequently asked for the fee to be paid to him personally. By that time, Coyer, Guy, Carley, and Inland Steel had agreed to work together on the Georgetown project. They rejected Bloomgarden's requests for payment. Bloomgarden brought an action in federal court against Coyer, Guy, and other entities involved in the project, seeking payment of the finder's fee. Bloomgarden alleged that an agreement to reward Bloomgarden for making the introductions should be implied from the circumstances. Bloomgarden also asserted that he should be compensated under a quasi-contract theory. The district court granted summary judgment for Coyer and the other defendants. Bloomgarden appealed to the D.C. Circuit.